On paper, Kosovo has an excellent constitution when it comes to human rights, and it's something that politicians, lawmakers and civil society organizations continuously point out. However, looking at LGBTI rights, there are three areas in which current legislation either contradicts the constitution or fails to fully address some key issues. Let's take a look at same-sex marriage, an issue that to this day remains open to interpretation. The Constitution clearly states that no one should be discriminated against, including based on sexual orientation. It also says that everybody has the right to marry and a right to have a family. So the Constitution does not define marriage as being between a man and a woman. But it does say that marriage is regulated by the family law. And this is where the mess begins. Article 4 of the family law states that there shall be no direct or indirect discrimination against any person or persons based on sexual orientation. All fine till here. Then defines marriage as a legally registered community of two persons of different sexes. So it leaves same-sex marriage in a legal gray area. And unless someone sets out to test the power of the constitution by actually trying to marry, this uncertainty will remain. In 2015, the Assembly voted to amend the anti-discrimination law to include discrimination based on gender identity. But while persons who identify with a different gender now enjoy their rights on paper, institutions are still failing to grasp how to go about respecting these rights. For example, while changing a name is easily done, when it comes to officially registering a change of gender, institutions seem to be unclear as to who has to do what. When an LGBTI activist recently attempted to request to register a change of gender, the Ministry of Internal Affairs directed them to the Pristina municipality, who then directed them to the Basic Court. The Basic Court then sent them back to the municipality. Do you see the pattern? To help end this confusion, LGBTI organizations are asking for the creation of an administrative instructions document that will clearly outline the process. Now, it's up to the Ministry of Internal Affairs to do so. As LGBTI persons continue to face violence because of their sexual orientation and gender identity, it is important that the justice sector prosecutes these incidents as hate crimes. But yet again, the legal framework is not that clear. Let's take a specific example. In 2016, two LGBTI activists were attacked in Ferizai. The prosecution used Article 147 of the Criminal Code, which covers violence towards national, racial, religious, ethnic or other such groups. This article does not explicitly mention sexual orientation. Another article does, but was not used. This shows how the prosecution lacked expertise for handling such crimes in the legal system. And it also shows that the criminal code needs amending. Article 147 should include sexual orientation. LGBTI groups are also calling for gender identity to be added to these articles, as it currently appears nowhere in the criminal code. For them, these amendments will offer more protection to LGBTI persons and encourage more people to seek justice. They were sent to the Ministry of Justice in December 2016, but are yet to be officially proposed. Outside of civil society, the main source for advocating on the issues is the Advisory and Coordination Group for LGBTI Rights, and it could take a far more active position. The group was established in 2013 and is comprised of LGBTI organizations, eight different ministries, the prosecutor's office, the police, and the office of the ombudsperson. These are more or less the main actors needed to coordinate the majority of the work around LGBTI rights, safety, and support. Even though the group has organized many awareness-raising schemes with the police, a firmer and more vocal position from them could help to push forward proposals up to implementation. <laughs>